2004 will always have to be special. That was a, uh, that was a, <laughs> And for those of us, uh, uh, Pedro, David, Tech, Wake, uh, uh, many others, uh, of course, who have our names associated with the 2004 season, John, Tom, so many of us in the front office, it's a, that, that has to be right at the top of the, uh, of the pyramid. Well, I would say so. I think we all agree with Larry Lucchino, New Red Sox Hall of Famer, President and CEO Emeritus. Congratulations. Thank you, David. Thank very you very nicely much. done. The uh, gala was terrific last night, but as we came uh, through commercial, you were talking about how touching it was and how deeply touched you were by several things that happened last night. I was. I was. Uh, uh, I expected to uh, try to enjoy it. I, you know, it's uh, sometimes. Uh, you don't quite know what the, what how it's going to unfold, but uh, I was hoping to enjoy it, and I really did. And I was especially touched uh, by John Henry uh, stepping up and doing an, a introduction. He volunteered for that role. I thought that was a, a very nice uh, uh, thing, gesture on his part, and he said some very nice things. And uh, the whole experience, I was honored to be taken into a class that includes uh, uh, tech and uh, and wake. I mean, my gracious, uh, mm. that's. Uh, this uh, the class of 16 will be special to me to be included with those guys. We think of that first championship in 86 years. We think of all of you guys and the roles that you played uh, individually and together to make that happen. Yeah, well, thank you. It was a uh, yeah, it was our third year of operation, and I, I used to say that uh, our astute business plan called for us to win it all in the third third <laughs> year, but that was uh, hardly the case. I look around this ballpark and every time I do Larry I think about the work that you put into first of all save Fenway Park and then make it what it is today and I've told you this privately several times it's so much nicer to come to Fenway now than when I was a kid. Thank you. I'm glad to hear you say that and, and uh, it was a real labor of love for us. We we uh, my partners and I in FSG uh, talked about a 10 year plan to renovate the place. And it's one of our great uh, points of pride and satisfaction. Chisinau pops that one up, but no play. It's off into the box seats. Yeah, and the place looks looks great. Of course, it always looks good when it's full of people, too, as the old front office executive in me. But, uh, yeah, it's a um, saving Fenway. We were the only group of the six uh, groups that were vying for the franchise that was uh, willing to uh, to commit Tom Warner, when he invited me to join the, our group, uh, said that the Saving Fenway was a key part of it, and uh, we all shared that uh, that premise. Well, you've always had a, a, a soft spot in your heart for all the ballparks, and you talked last night about Forbes Field, where you grew up in Pittsburgh, yeah. and uh, you tried to build Camden Yards in, as in, in that fashion of the fashion of a Fenway Park, a Forbes Field. I found that very interesting, and. That's really what baseball is all about. I mean, something special about the ballpark. Boy, you're exactly right. And uh, and uh, with other sports, there's a uh, there's a generic nature to the facilities. I suppose you. I mean, Boston Garden was a little different, to be sure. But in football and, and uh, basketball and hockey, you don't have the irregularities, the different dimensions, the quirkiness. The uh, I remember when we presented uh, our plan for. Uh, Camden Yards to then Commissioner Bob Giamatti, he looked at it and said, "This is an A, Larry. This is really good." I said, "Bart, I checked. You give some. You have given better grades than that at Yale." <laughs> he said, "Well, to tell you the truth, it's not quite quirky enough. It's not as quirky as Fenway." And uh, what we're trying to do, of course, was to avoid the combination uh, cookie cutter, concrete donut kind of ballpark mm -hmm. and. Uh, and so we added some quirkiness uh, to uh, to Camden Yards, and he eventually came back and gave us an A plus. <laughs> That's something I'd like to say, and I've been a, a Red Sox fan since well as long as I can remember. I'm 63 years old, so let's put it <laughs> let's put it for, let's put it about 57, 58 years. And I know a lot about the history of this ball club. And my personal feeling, Dave, is that when you talk about the history of the Red Sox. I think first of all Tom Yawkey comes to mind obviously and then I think a very close second is Larry Lucchino because wow. of what he did when he came in here he changed his whole ballpark he changed the culture of the organization he did 
an, you did remarkable things and you won championships yeah. but, but you did much more than that and it was on the job every day day in and day out you have to respect the work ethic now I mean I'm not saying that to, I'm, I'm saying that as, as, as a Bostonian as a New Englander as someone who grew up here as a fan who played here who broadcast here that's just what I believe. Well that means a lot to me Jerry coming from you you're a man of uh, strong opinions and you're, uh, you're you've got some real perspective and to hear you say that uh, is is uh, very uh, very gratifying. Thank you uh, very much. But it has been a labor of love and we've had fun along the way uh, John Tom myself the entire front office I feel like I've got a second family and it's the Red Sox front office family. Uh, we were the show horses in, in some ways, but the front office uh, members were the workhorses who uh, did so much to change the ballpark, to find the talented young players, to uh, to find the, the, the sponsors that gave us the, uh, the financial wherewithal to do all that we wanted to do. So I feel like I, I was enormously privileged to hold the position of president and CEO for, for the years that I did, and uh, I am grateful to my partners and to the uh, and to the people in, in Red Sox Nation. They're going to send Davis to first base. I think they got to said he, he said he swung at that. Well John Farrell came out to argue it. Yeah let's take one more look and, and let's say it's a change up that's going to be inside. Let's see if he swings at it and then it hits him. I think he did. Whoa. And I think that's why they're going to call him out. And then some pain right now over there at first base. If I, might, I believe it's uh, so it's true that there is no rule in the rule book defining a check swing. Yeah, it's, it's just it's, it's just what the umpire a, thinks it is or says it is. You know, umpires will say, "Did he did he commit?" It's almost like you've got to get in the mind yeah, exactly. to find out whether he yeah. committed or not. I, I saw the home plate umpire give the out call, so that's why I'm thinking maybe he thinks it's a swing, and now they're checking down at first base. Uh, Frank Conner is checking. And we'll we'll uh, we'll see what the end result of this is now. There's no question he got hit in the fingers. But did he swing. I'm not so sure he did. Well he's sending him to first base there. Yeah he well, is. Yeah. But then why did he call him out. In a lot of pain there. And now. He is leaving the bag. And he's putting his gear back on like he's going to go back to hit. A couple of confusing signals from the home plate umpire Chad Fairchild. That's what the problem is right now because. Now they're in a discussion with Francona and uh, the two three um, four umpires are going to join <laughs> this discussion now. So this is a real mess because I did see the home plate umpire give the out call. He did after he had sent him to first after. base as a hit batsman. Right. So this is why it's terribly confusing at the moment. And John Fowl came out. Take a listen to this. Okay, it says in the first base, uh, I get that. But then I don't get the out call. I don't know I don't know why he did that. And John Farrell came out in between to talk with Fairchild. And Terry Francona would like an explanation. Runner right now at first base in Oribe. All right, he's pointing to first base. Now, what's this for? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Go to first, you're out. <laughs> I, I don't get that call. I, I just don't get it. Uh, I don't either. Points to first base and calls him out. And they're still having a discussion down there. Now, Uribe is standing at first base, so he must know something. But Frank Francona hasn't got an answer yet from four umpires. You got an answer for this Larry <laughs> you got an answer for everything I, what I what I would say is it would be nice if there were a definition of the the, the, uh, the check swing the check swing uh, in the rule book so that it could be applied to this situation more easily and more understandably you know what I'd love I would love a microphone on Jim Joyce right now yeah because he's, he's explaining exactly what he thinks to Frank Corner. I'm not sure Tito's going to buy it I'm to, to me it looked like he got hit in the hand and he didn't swing. That's what it looked like to me. And I think Fairchild thought that initially. So it's a hit batsman that would put runners at first and second. 
Here's a side swing right here, side look, and I, I don't know. I mean, to me, it looks like you got hit in the fingers. Go to first, and now you're out. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> okay. I, I, that's yeah. that's the mess we got going on well, right Jim, now. Well, Jim McKean is the the, the uh, crew chief, and he is a he's a take charge kind of guy. Uh, I, I expect that uh, he will bring this thing to a resolution. Yep. Jim Joyce. Quickly. Jim Joyce, excuse me. Now, it will come to a resolution yeah. at some point tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is taking a long time. We, we hope. Right now, it's taking forever. And T <laughs> Tito's still looking somewhat confused. <laughs> so, Davis is walking away here. And they posted a second out up on the board here. So a runner on at first base, and they're saying two down. What was Tito doing? I mean, it looked like it looked like Tito thought the Buckles was going to make a pitch while he was coming across. Mm. Well, that's kind of strange, isn't it? Very odd. I can only assume that's a strikeout. That's the <laughs> well, only thing that makes sense. Well, the other thing is, what was the count on that particular pitch? Santana here takes a pitch down in the dirt. If 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 the count was not two strikes, and he made contact, and he ruled that it hit the bat, then it would be an out of first base, right? If the Red Sox tagged first base, count was one and two. One and two, so it had to be called a swing. Mm. What an odd piece of umpiring though from Fairchild. Some misdirection there. Santana has doubled. He's also walked and scored a run. Here it is four to two Cleveland as we talk with new Red Sox Hall of Famer Larry Lucchino. Does a day ever go by Larry where someone doesn't come up and say thank you for everything you did. And especially about Fenway Park. Almost it happens quite a bit as you might expect and. Uh, a lot of the thanks are about uh, Fenway Park and a lot are about 2004. Um, I feel a great sense of pride in uh, 2007 and 2013 as well. Particularly 13 because of the bond that it, uh, developed between the city and the team. In the uh, special circumstances of that year the Boston strong year. And you haven't uh, gone away. I mean you still spend a few days a week here. You were involved now the chairman of the Jimmy Fund. You've got stuff going down at Pawtucket. You you can't do nothing. I mean, you just got to keep I'm moving. Not sure, right? I'm not sure if I had a paper route, I'd probably be staying up all night working on it. <laughs> but uh, but I am uh, trying to slow down. You know, I am uh, getting up there. And uh, but uh, I do. Uh, you know, baseball has been the axis of my life for a long time. But I am looking forward to doing more and more with the Jimmy Fund and with the Red Sox and the Jimmy Fund together. I think that uh, that that relationship is really special. Inside for ball four. That'll put runners on at first and second. And Kipnis who's already cracked a three run homer. So it has been a long inning. In more ways than one. Because of the umpire conference there. As Davis eventually was ruled out on a strikeout with a runner at first base. And was unable to take that base because the base was occupied. In any event, whether he's actually hit by the pitch or not is the other question that we continue to have. So Kipnis with his sixth home run of the season. Red Sox were up two to nothing until that one disappeared in the right field seats. Is there truth to the story that they were about to throw the ladder away on the monster and you were the one who ran in and said, don't throw it. We want to put it back up there. Well, quirkiness, as I mentioned earlier, is an important factor to us. And uh, I, I do remember uh, helping and to save the ladder, if you will. But there were there were a few of us who felt strongly about it. That um, and its whole purpose was, of course, to get up into the netting, get the baseballs that were hit up there during batting practice, during games. 
Uh, but uh, it it was a quirky element of it, and it was part of the, the wall for as long as it's been there. And it struck me that uh, it should uh, it should stay, and uh, I'm glad we've done we've done it. People uh, make a big uh, bit of an issue of it, but I think the ball has hit that ladder about twice in my 15 years there with the Red Sox. Right, right. Not very often. Yeah. But it's a lot of fun when it does. Yeah. <laughs> Never know which way it's going to go. We, uh, our goal, if we get a chance to uh, to build a, uh, a a new ballpark at some point that went down the road at the uh, AAA level, which we're not talking about uh, th these days, but uh, having the special dimensions of Fenway Park would be part of it, so that our players could have the advantage of playing in uh, this, uh, a ballpark as quirky and strange as that. We'd probably have to put a ladder up there too. Sure. Oh, you did it in spring training for in, in uh, Fort Myers and. Now possibly in Triple A, that'd be great. So it's a rebay and Santana aboard, a single and a walk. Chisholm all struck out. Davis was ruled to have struck out swinging. At long last, here comes the 2-1 pitch and a pop-up in the left, coming on Swihart. So far, very smooth out there, and that is out number three. Larry, again, thanks so much for the visit and congratulations. Thank you, David. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it very Larry much. Larry Lucchino joining us here, 4-2. to two. The Indians have the lead at Fenway.